Hi everyone, I wanted to leave a message tonight and I have entitled it Bitter Self-Righteousness but um, let me pray right now Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I thank you so much for the way your word teaches us I pray, Father, that um, the lesson that I have learned from this um, reading tonight, that I will be able to share it in a way that is helpful to others. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray, amen. And um, I've entitled it um, Bitter Self-Righteousness, and actually it comes from uh, my reading in um, today, or maybe it was yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, that I was in Luke chapter 15, verse 29. And it was the story that uh, most of us know as the story of the prodigal son. And um, the Bible verse that I chose was um, Luke 15, 29. And this is the older son is speaking. Um, and in it it says, He answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed you. I never disobeyed your commands, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. And um, in this story, a lot of times we think about the younger son a lot. Um, in fact, the story is usually called the story of the prodigal son, um, meaning that they're thinking in terms of one son. But in truth, in the story, there are two sons in the story. Um, there's the young son and the older son. And we, um, a lot of times, focus on the younger son. We know about him, how he asked his father um, for the money for his inheritance was actually, that was a horrible thing to do. And pretty much what he was saying to his father is that, um, I don't want to wait until you die to get the money that I want. Um, give it to me now. And so um, his father gave him um, the grace, gave him the money. He went out and he used it uh, for the Bible says riotous living is what he did. But then that brother had a change of heart. Um, he came back. Um, he, he saw the wrong. Um, he turned away from that wrong. Um, he went to his father. He asked for forgiveness um, from his father. And his father um, not only forgave him, um, but he was so grateful I mean, just so joyful for that son coming home. And of course, the lesson we often hear um, when pastors preach that is that lesson of our Heavenly Father. You know, our Heavenly Father wants us to have godly sorrow, um, to have that um, where our hearts are hurting because we see the nature of our sin. And um, this son did that. He sinned and he turned away from his sin and he ran back to his father. And we are called to do that all the time. But then I was thinking about that older brother. Um, and while his younger brother was out living in sin, this older brother was home. He was home with his father. Um, he was the one that was doing the work that needed to be done. You know, in a lot of ways, he reminds me of the Martha and Mary story, you know, where Mary jumps up because Jesus comes and, um, I'm sorry, yeah, um, yeah, Mary jumps up and when Jesus comes and Martha is doing the work and um, as a child, I guess I could always um, d identify with the Martha because I was of the works, you know, I was had a works mentality that I was going to get it done and get all the accolades that I could get, you know, by getting it done. But in terms of grace, I had to let that go and understand that I couldn't get it done anyway, all myself. But so here we have this son. Um, 
we can't fault him. He did a very good thing. He stayed home um, with his dad. He did the work that needed to be done. Um, but we have to um, understand this, that um, at any time, um, we can fall into temptation. And the temptation that this um, young, um, this older son fell into was thinking that he was able to do the right thing um, by himself because of what he did, something inside of him, you know. He told his dad, I stood here, I did this, I, I, I. And it's never about, you know, the I, I, I. Um, even when I have been able to make some kind of headway, I got to look back on all the people who have gone before me, all the people who have helped me. But most of all, I have to remember that it is God who works in me to will and to act according to his good purpose. And when I fail to give God the credit uh, for his good and perfect gift of being able to do the right thing, then I can fall into the sin of what I call bitter self-righteousness. Bitter self-righteousness is that, you know, I did all this work. Um, I, you know, made myself, I, I did this, and why can't you do the same? You know, get yourself together. I did all of this. And then um, when I get into that type of a mindset, which is a flesh mindset, then my eyes start turning to the sins of other people about what they are not doing. You know, I'm doing this and they are not doing this and um, get into that bitterness. And the thing about bitterness anyway um, is that it's quite ugly. It's a very ugly thing when people are bitter. And when we combine it with self-righteousness, I mean, it is unbelievable. And the other thing about bitter self-righteousness, we can see it um, in other people, but we definitely have a hard time seeing it in ourselves. This is why I tell people, stay in the Word. Stay in the Word, because the Word will show you your nakedness. It'll show you yourself, and because we are blind to our own sin. Um, but the Bible is not blind because the Bible is God speak. God is speaking and telling us, and he left those things for us to learn from. The Bible says that um, these things were written for us who live in the end of the age. So we want to be in the Word. You hear me say that so often. If you're not in the Word every day, I'm not being legalistic, please. Don't listen to the devil. I'm telling you the truth. You pray. You ask the Lord for that, for that willingness to do it. I mean, we can learn how to be in the Word as we learn how to do other stuff. You know, brushing our teeth. You know, brushing our hair. Cleaning our body. Eating the food we need. All of these things are things that we have learned to do. And we can definitely learn how to do that um, on a daily basis. So we want to stay in the Word of God because it will show us um, the nature of the logs in our eyes, it says in Matthew 7, 3-5. It's not that we don't um, talk to people and give them information and feedback that can help them, but not without the Lord giving us the go-ahead to do it, and not before we are taking care of our own business. And this is what the Word of God does. It helps us to take care of our stuff. It helps us to take care of our stuff. And so we want to take care of our stuff. Uh, we want to be used by the Lord. Um, it's a wonderful thing to be used by the Lord um, to help others as others have helped us. But let me pray. Um, let me pray. 
Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, um, I just thank you for the convicting, you know, the convicting property of your word. And Lord, we don't want to forget that we all can sin, and especially the sin of self-righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own. And this whole sin of bitterness, it is so ugly. So, Father, please show us. We want to be your people. We do. We want to walk um, like Jesus walked. We want to have the mind of Christ. Give it to us, Lord. We need it. We thank you so much for loving us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys, thanks again for letting me do these things. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.